We are. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Back with another freaking video, man. Back with another freaking man. Spray another one's trill. Your one's one is trill. Yeah. Your one's. Too bad we have our mic hooked up, though. Let's spray in it. Bring another one. It's trillion ones, man. Y'all know what it is, man. Before we get started, baby, go ahead and bring them. Y'all, oh, what's going on, guys? So glad you're with us. It is the Christmas holidays, our favorite time of year. What are you guys cooking? Hopefully, your houses are decorated. I love all the decorations. I love all the, the treats, the smell of the pine, the smell of the fresh Christmas stuff. That was my dad's favorite um, holiday of the season. He would always go out. So hopefully you guys are having a great, great holiday. Just want to say we love you. We appreciate all your support. And thank you for riding with us. I want a Red Rider BB gun. You don't poke your eye out, kid. Um, so, hey, so y'all know what it is, man. We wanted to start something up before we start doing these other series, these other episodes. But So, I don't know if you remember this when um, Snoop had CGN. Um, he had his own little show. He had his own show. But this one had um, uh, Snoop and uh, Bill Burr on there. So I wanted to do this one to see if it was going to be funny. Because I guess it's just an interview. Mm -hmm. And they just talking. But you know, how can it not be funny without with Snoop and Bill Burr? You know you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So let's listen. I was really sad when Burt Reynolds died. Me too. He was, there's a very few mustache guys. Marlboro Man, Burt Reynolds. Marlboro Man was the shit. Marlboro Man was the shit. And the Wrangler Man too. Yep. Here <laughs> comes Wrangler, he's <laughs> one tough I, customer. I don't remember this, this for my time. what he likes <laughs> when he sees it. Ooh, Wrangler. <laughs> I haven't thought about that in fucking... Yeah. <laughs> I haven't thought about that man. like fucking the Since Wrangler, was a kid. Man, I, I was never what they were looking No one was looking for a balding, red-headed man. It was so crushing. I remember I would be driving around. I, I was I, in this 8800 Accord. Great I, fucking car, man. Five speed. I, there was no I, social I, media I, that I could I, then go I, and whine about it. <laughs> That's how much of a people pleaser I was back then. That would feel like you're still killing me. awkward it just got in here. For Bill Burr playing in the background. <laughs> That's all. I don't even realize. This guy's red. Oh my god. Pete, too. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, players and pimps, you inside the GGN with your host with the most finding Nemo, aka Nemo Hose, and I'm back at you with another blast from the past. I'm talking about we finna do it till we satisfied. Special guest. Somebody make some noise for the one and only Bill Burr in the motherfucking house. Ooh. What's happening, Bill? How are you, sir? I'm slow motion with the potion trying to get to the ocean, man. <laughs> so tell me, man, how'd you get started with this comedy thing? I started in Boston. Boston. Signed yeah. up for a talent contest. Mm -hmm. You know, find Boston's funniest college student. I love Boston people. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I grew up, like, hating Boston people from a distance because it was Boston-LA rivalry. Oh, yeah? So we could yeah. never get up on them, you know what I'm saying, only until they came and played us, whether it was football, basketball, whatever it was, we, we'd never be able to meet anybody from Boston. Then once we start traveling and meeting people, it's like they're the same kind of people as us. They loud, obnoxious. Yes. They give a fuck about their teams, fuck everything else, and that's just what it is. Yeah, it is. We're not good looking either. <laughs> I noticed that when I was watching the Super Bowl. Anytime they cut to the crowd, I'm just like, Jesus Christ, we're an ugly state. <laughs> who were some of the influenced people, people that influenced you coming up as far as comedy? Who were the people that you looked up to that made you want to like jump in? Um. Well, I'm a kid from the 70s. I was born in 68, so it was definitely, uh, I watched shit with my dad early on, like Tonight Show stuff, if I, if, um, if you let me stay up that late. That's, That's when like Johnny all, Carson was popping. Yep, all the, all the Jerry Lewis shit, all the, uh, I used to watch CPO Sharky, remember oh, that? Wow. CPO really? Sharky. Don Rickles, and after that, that. I, I bought, uh, I started buying comedy albums. I remember, it sounds familiar. I'd buy them for my dad for Father's Day, knowing that he'd only listened to him once, so I was really buying it for myself, so I bought Rodney Dangerfield and all that shit. But Rodney, no respect. Rodney yeah. was a bad oh, guy. I used to like yeah, Rodney I Dangerfield. I had that album that I got. That album, him. Rapping Rodney, was old. Oh, but the game changer God. was I, I bought a Richard Pryor album. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> and I didn't know who he was. This is before cable. Right. And I was just a kid or whatever, and I just he just looked funny. <laughs> he's at, uh, that N word's crazy. Oh, that, that one, you know, crazy. he's, he's oh, doing yes, this, yes, you know, he's pointing yes, at himself. Yes, yeah, yes. so I got that. 
And what I loved about his stuff was it, I felt like I was watching a movie. Mm, yeah. You could see it. Yes. Yes. And what's funny, because to this day, when I listen to his, if somebody brings up a bit, I don't picture him. I picture the bit. Yeah, I, I picture the crap game that he was talking about and all of those characters and all that type of stuff. And um, I've seen comics have, like, glimpses of it. And I, I literally get, I, I love stand-up so much, I get, like, excited right. when, I, when, I, when I'll see it. And, um, but he was the only guy I ever saw that He's just wired to... So it's amazing how... A lot of the comics, you know, will go back to the original yep. people, and he's always one of the ones. I remember watching Richard Pryor when I was growing up as a kid, and he was funny. And it, but it was interesting. So Burr, listen to Pryor, but the new younger comedians, he'd be like, I looked up to Bernie Mac. Um, I looked up to, you know, maybe Eddie Murphy, Eddie Murphy, Delirious. Mm -hmm. It just depends on your era. Okay, because he did that... Um, the, the movie that I remember as a kid watching him do was with and, and, Willy Wonka. And I mean, who was the guy's name? 10, 10, 20 more years. I'm like, I looked up to Desi. I looked up to, <laughs> right. to, to, yeah. to Funny Country Mike, Wayne. Country Wayne. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but that's how it like, goes. Who, Rich Brown, who? Right. It's going to be an era, and I'm like, well, who? But maybe but some of them will go grades. back, you know, because it's still going to, the generations are going to keep going. Richard Pryor is still going to be known for what he does. Yeah. Yeah, so he's still he's, there as a he's, classic. He's in a, a historical comedian, so mm -hmm. if you want to know your roots, you have to go back to him. Right. Wire. He, he could sustain that. And then he had a way of making fun of white people <laughs> that, that didn't make you, you defensive as a white right. guy. No, you laughed at it. He yeah, made, he but, made, he but, but he still made as hard hitting points. Um, whereas other times, like I'll watch a black right. comic on stage, and I'll be like, man, this guy doesn't like me. Right. And that makes me too yeah. personal. It makes yeah, it I just start thinking, ah, right. fuck this guy. But see, Rich, you know, <laughs> know some of the shit he's saying is right. Rich had a craft about his stuff. You know, those legends had a craft about they, the way they told jokes and the way that they did their thing. Yeah. I think it was coming from a real place as opposed to these comedians nowadays, so to speak, they're, they're trying to emulate as opposed to trying to be who they are. There's, there's definitely, uh, well, the problem now is there's so much opportunity to, you can just shoot something right. and, and just put Overnight it up Overnight success. Yeah, it's, it's, it's I, I would think as a comedy fan coming up, it, it would be hard to kind of weave through it. Like where, like where I was coming up, I mean, that was not, that was not a good situation either where, you know, they, they were mainly picking white guys, so that wasn't a good thing. <laughs> how, how hard was it for you to get in the comedy store back in the day? <clears throat> Well, Mitzi didn't pass me. I remember that. And she, so I just, that, and everybody she has a fucking bad story about it. Give she, me yours. She, well, she didn't even wait to the end of my set. Like, I was, I was still up there. This and, Paulie's mom? Yeah, and evidently, like, halfway through my set, she was just like, he's not ready. <laughs> That's messed up. And I took it personal. <laughs> I was like, oh. man, fuck her. Fuck this fucking fuck. Fuck that way. I was like, I was like, I'm in Western Mississippi. <laughs> fuck them. They're not funny. <laughs> But now that I'm older, looking back, I wasn't. Up. I wasn't ready. I don't she know. was really giving you game, right? She was. She was. It was getting you right. No, she didn't give a shit. If you it, like, she wasn't trying to help me out. She was trying to keep her club going. It's just like you're not good enough. Oh, so she had no, no. That's okay. it. Yeah, I and that. I didn't, you know. So that was kind of how it was. And there was no social media that I could then go whine about it and create some Did fucking hashtag. Did you ever hashtag. go back and get your flash moment on? Like, bitch, I'm the shit now. <laughs> right. um, I didn't quite say that to her, but I, <laughs> <laughs> that's not the way I would have said it. I, um, I went back. And, no, you know what I did? I just realized. I, I was out in L.A. too soon, and I realized, I was like, I have to go to New York, and I have to get so funny. That's what they, the L.A. That, wants you to go right I can, New York, I can get back. over this thing, because I was not the flavor of the month guy. I was never what they were, I, no one was looking for a balding, red-headed male. <laughs> so L.A. was harder, a fucking LA was harder for you than New York. Yeah, just because I came out too soon. It was just, it was so hard to, uh, wow. just to get on stage. If, if, if you needed a certain like now, no, amount of momentum, stage, like a certain amount of heat to get on stage out here, and I had it for a second, and then I didn't have it. I was on a, a short-lived show, and that thing went away. And then I remember one night I was at the Laugh Factory, 
and I was, I don't know what, I mean, I was cursing a lot or whatever, but I remember Jamie Masada came up to me. He goes, Body, what happened to you, Body? You lose your show, you lose your show, then you fuck, fuck, fuck all over the place. And I thought he was just joking around. So I just laughed. I'm like, yeah, whatever, whatever. And then he didn't give me spots the next week. And then the next week I didn't get spots. And the next week I didn't get spots. And then somebody gave me the fucking worst advice ever. It was like, you need to call up and apologize, which I did. So then he had no respect no. for me. He would deny all of this shit. I love him to this day. But he would deny all of this shit. But the, the good that came out of that was that was the only club I was in at at that point. And then I just, I was just like, I mean, I was doing stand up in like fucking restaurants and shit. People like eating, not knowing there's gonna be a show. <laughs> like looking up from cutting into something. And you're like, hey, you know, what's up with Bill Clinton or whatever the fuck I was doing back then. And it was just, it was wow. so crushing. <laughs> that's messed up. Oh, that's messed up. Joy, could you imagine cutting in your steak? Oh, that's messed up. Oh, we got a comedy going on? Right. That's cold blooded. <laughs> That's cold blooded. I remember I would be driving home. And I was had this '88 Honda Accord. Great fucking car, man. Too. <laughs> Last forever. It just forever. It just, fucking, it, it just, just won't die. You can't. Cars. They won't die. And I was just driving home, and I just just had that. I just fucking. I hated it. I love it now. I fucking. I hated LA. And I remember, I just one day I just said, "Fuck this." Uh, oh, you know, and my landlord had broken into my apartment. <laughs> and, and I just wow. so I went downstairs the next morning and I, and I said to the landlord right there, was, uh, 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 the, the manager, saying, yeah, one of your guys broke into my apartment and blah, 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 blah. And I told him the whole story. And then he immediately goes, I don't appreciate you coming down here accusing me. That was his vibe. It wasn't like, <laughs> whoa, whoa, what, what? Hang he on a second. He did it. Yes. I, done I forget that how that... When I stole some shit and the motherfucker got him. I don't appreciate you t asking yeah. me about some shit that I didn't see. <laughs> that was exactly his vibe, and I, I was so fucking mad, I never got him back, and I'm not gonna lie, I still think about that guy every once in a while. Give me the address. One, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than I did. My girlfriend at the time said, she said, you should go key his car. I'm like, that's a fucking... That's a girl move. That's a pussy move, yeah. So I couldn't <laughs> get her to so shit, give it. I didn't you, do that. So that was my experience in LA. When did you start the uh, Monday morning podcast? I started that in 2007. <laughs> Accidentally, I was over this comedian's house, Robert, uh, apartment, Robert Kelly. And he was like, dude, you should do a podcast, dude. And I was like, what's a podcast? He's like, it's a, it's a fucking way to communicate. communicate with your fans. And back then, you called up like a service. So I would just do like five minutes, um, you know, driving around, being in an airport, making fun of fat people or whatever, and then oh, say what that. improv I was going to be at. And then I, five minutes turned into six, that turned into funny. ten, just like stand-up, just how you just start All building right. your act. And then before I knew it, people writing in asking me advice. And then I was doing an hour-long thing myself, and I didn't have a guest, which was perfect, because I got in this business because I didn't want to work, right? right you right. get in this business, I don't want to fucking do that. I want to deal with... Be your own boss. Yeah, somebody else's schedule. So I've just been doing that ever since, and... Um, seven go. years, that's 12 years. It's wow. still been running. Yeah. That's success. That's Monday, dope, and, uh, Monday and Thursday. I didn't know that's crazy, because that's how this show started. The same kind of way. We started with like two Well, I've been trying to figure out when we could do this show for since 2012, believe it or not. For real? Every I had time. to fire a bunch of motherfuckers before I got to you, because there was a bunch of weirdos working for me and shit. People behind the scenes over there oh. didn't know what the fuck they were doing. Normal. <laughs> yeah, they, they half normal. That long head, <laughs> that long head motherfucker that came in here. <laughs> that's my crew, man. I get it. So tell me about the show on Netflix, man. I fucking love that show. Oh, F, F is for family. F is for family. That's loosely based on my childhood from the 1970s. So, so fucking dope. Give me some. Oh, you like that show? I'm a oh, 70s baby, great. man. What okay. the fuck? Okay. I grew up in that area eating cereal and watching cartoons that's right. and oh, shit. Come yeah. on, man. That's shit with the sugar-coated marshmallows. Right. Shit. That's well, so cool. I, uh, yeah, that, was an, that 80s, idea baby. came about see, through see, telling see. childhood stories on stage, a lot of my shit, so I used to do about it or whatever. And then I, she was the one that used to, you know, beat us up. I was in a fraternity, and he kept the paddle as a souvenir. My mother used to use it, so we used to hide Damn. the fuck. Yeah, she used to line us up. There was five of us, and you'd want to be about like third, 
So that way she'd get tired. Tired. <laughs> you didn't want to be fourth or fifth because then she was too tired and she would hit the back of your legs or your lower, like her oh, you aim. Miss it. She her aim miss it. Wasn't <laughs> as good. Yeah, and then you try to block it and hit your hand and all that shit. So he used to be like, Bill, you got to talk about that shit. That's funny. People loved it. They laughed. It was funny. And then somewhere along the line in the 2000s, when everybody started to pretend to care about everybody, whatever the yeah, fuck that, fake that is. Yeah, that fake love. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> hashtag caring, but they're not going to actually go out and help Doing somebody, things. you know? Um, they started groaning. I'd be like doing, I'd be like fucking doing stand up and people like, they'd be like, oh, like everything got labeled. Like that's, that's domestic violence, that's mental abuse, that's right. physical abuse. Right. And um, I just got really frustrated. So I stopped telling the stories, but I knew that they were funny. So one day I was out walking my dog and it just hit me. I was just like, well, why don't I just animate it? Right. Because nobody seems to give a fuck. Nobody give a fuck. They yeah. gonna, everything going to pass that they had a problem yeah. with on stage. It's going to go right clean yeah. by. Like if you have animated kids doing drugs, it's smoking, okay. yeah, they it's okay. People don't have animated kids, so they're like, <laughs> all right, this one influence my real kid. Wow. So yeah, yeah so right. that was the thing. I was just gonna do little five minute vignettes on my website, and um, then I met Vince Vaughn, and then it just kind of, it just Vince. it just Vince. went Vince. from it went from there. So we're, we're right now we're right in the fourth season, and like I said, it's loosely based on my family because I didn't want to embarrass anybody by putting all our shit out there. But uh, what's funny is nobody in my family has watched it yet. 